order kitties, I'm carrying the vacuum tube witch. And today I've got a project on my bench. This is um, a power attenuator that uh, will be used for reducing the power going into a speaker. I will uh, plug it uh, in um, between the guitar amp and um, the speaker cabinet and that should allow for cranking the amp up um, to get some uh, nice distortion while keeping it uh, quiet-ish. So let's get over to the bench. So I've got this Hammond-like uh, aluminum box that I already made uh, holes in it then the parts are inside so what do we have here uh, this is a uh, 22 ohms uh, 40 watts uh, rheostat the wire mount uh, power uh, power potentiometer some labels that I made for for this device a control knob big heavy elegant a pair of quarter inch jacks A pair of 100 ohm resistors, a big uh, 8 ohm 50 watt resistor, and apart from uh, some mechanical tidbits, that would be that. But how is this device gonna work? Got a schematic uh, right here. So let's start with the circuit diagram. This is going to be an experimental design. And uh, we've got uh, the input jack that goes uh, right onto the slider of the potentiometer with two. 5 watt uh, 100 ohm resistors uh, going to both ends uh, of um, the resistive path on the potentiometer just like this and what does it do anyway? it keeps the total impedance of the circuit in a reasonable bounds. I did some uh, calculations uh, and uh, got the values of the of the parts, got the resistances uh, so that I've got uh, 8 ohms plus or minus uh, 2 so uh, it doesn't uh, really uh, keep the impedance constant but uh, it will keep it uh, in a reasonable bounds in the central position uh, we've got uh, two parallel uh, connections of uh, half of this and half of this would be 11 ohms and 100 ohms and uh, 11 ohms uh, parallel 100 ohms would be 1 over 1 over 11 and plus 1 over 100 and uh, that would be 9.9 .9 ohms and we've got two branches of 9.9 uh, .9 ohms 9.91 to be precise 
and both of them have uh, eight arms uh, in line with them, so um, those will sum up to 17.91, and uh, two branches uh, in parallel will be half of the 17.91, that would be 8.955, this is the maximum uh, impedance uh, of the circuit. Uh, just a little word on uh, resistances uh, and uh, impedances. The speaker <coughs> is a uh, 8 ohms, but uh, this is uh, impedance, not resistance. And what does it mean? It means that um, this is um, the equivalent of resistance that uh, it would pose to an uh, alternating current and by con convention uh, we use um, the module of uh, impedance at uh, 1000 Hz or 1 kilohertz that's the standard uh, testing uh, frequency for the audio circuits. And basically uh, the impedance uh, consists of two parts. The real part, that is the resistance, and uh, the imaginary part, that is uh, the reactance. And uh, reactance uh, depends on uh, the frequency and uh, the inductance uh, or capacitance. And then the reactive part is uh, what uh, changes uh, with frequency. So uh, that's why it's uh, important to to know that uh, if we see an uh, 8 ohms uh, speaker, this is uh, the value of uh, impedance at uh, 1 kilohertz. But uh, what happens when we turn the knob out of the middle position to one of the extreme positions? This turns this circuit into something different, where 8 ohms is paralleled by the whole uh, by uh, the potentiometer with uh, one resistance uh, shorted out and uh, the whole resistive path in parallel with uh, 100 ohms. And since uh, this real state is 22 ohms, the whole circuit will be 22 parallel with uh, 100, so that's 18.03 ohms. 18 ohms, um, and uh, if we add uh, the 8 ohms uh, to it, and then uh, it will be 26. And uh, 26 uh, or 26.03 parallel with uh, 8 ohms will be 6.12 ohms. That's the total impedance of the circuit. Then the, the load on the amplifier will be 8 plus or minus 2 ohms, roughly. It's uh, slightly, slightly less than uh, 2 ohms, but uh, let's, uh, let's just say it's uh, 6 to... to <coughs> 9 ohms, uh, oh, 
9.91 uh, I uh, I got this one wrong So uh, that would be pretty much uh, 8 plus or minus 1.9 That's pretty nice and what can we say about um, the influence of uh, the slider position on uh, the voltage? Let's take um, the minimum when, uh, when the slider is on the resistor side rather than uh, the speaker side. And uh, that would place um, the, the highest uh, resistance uh, in line with the speaker, and we get most uh, attenuation. And the voltage on the speaker would be about 31% uh, uh, of uh, the input voltage. So that would be... 10 dB attenuation um, because by uh, convention uh, the dB value is uh, 20 times uh, logarithm uh, base 10 uh, of uh, the voltage ratio. And in the middle position we've got uh, 0.45 for that's uh, 44.7 percent and that would am amount to 7 dB attenuation and of course in the max position it would be uh, 0 dB though uh, it's not uh, not exactly 0 dB because uh, the whole branch uh, and uh, in the extreme uh, position, that's uh, also the maximum, uh, it would be 6.12 ohms uh, in total. It would load the amplifier slightly more than uh, the nominal 8 ohms. But uh, the, the voltage ratio uh, would depend on the output resistance or output impedance uh, of your amplifier and that would be especially true for tube amplifiers solid state ones uh, have uh, a lot uh, smaller output impedances so let's uh, start uh, by uh, building the circuit. So I've got some wire that I will be using for building this got this uh, nice uh, wire stripper and how this stripper works it's very straightforward just uh, put the wire through a hole and then the lips uh, will pinch it and if you pull the wire back the lips will cut a portion of the insulation off leaving a nice uh, and clean uh, surface uh, on the wire I think I can get a better view on this Nice and clean, just how I like it.
so let's start uh, by attaching the load resistor in place. What I would like to do first uh, would be putting some uh, thermal grease uh, on the resistor because uh, this thing will uh, dissipate uh, the heat and uh, it's pretty important to have uh, a uh, good uh, thermal contact I picked this one up from Mr. Carlson's lab, one of my favorite electronics channels. And now let's find some uh, screws and nuts. use those uh, hex uh, screws because they look so good and my designs uh, are pretty big uh, on uh, elegance I will use four washers one uh, on uh, the screw head side and the other one on uh, the resistor side if I can apply a washer on the resistor side no it gets in the way, so I will have to resign. And apply a nut just like that. Oh, come on, for crying out loud. Just get in there already. And time for another one. And I need to find a screwdriver. There's one in my trusty service kit.
Nice and tight. So now I can attach uh, the real stat. And now it's time for the input and output jacks. Take a closer look. This contact is for the ground. While this goes uh, to the tip. And this will be our hot wire. I will place the jacks uh, so that uh, the ground contacts are opposite to each other. There you have it. So all of the parts are mechanically attached. And now it's time to add the ground wire. This is gonna be pretty much enough. And one portion of the wire will go between the jacks.
using the medical forceps to bend the wires. So looking at this, uh, let's just make the input on this side, the output on this side. So a wire would go out from uh, this end of the potentiometer to the output, and from this end to the resistor. Another wire would go from the input to the center and the ground wire from this end of the resistor to the ground on the jack. to cut it uh, to the proper length. Let's turn it around. That looks pretty nice, and I can solder it. And this is uh, what I'd like to avoid. See? I fucked this one up. So you might ask, Carrie, why did you fuck this one up? So I fucked this one up uh, because I had a bend and under uh, temperature the insulation wanted to spring back uh, out while uh, the wire was bending. But there's a way to fix this. And there's a way of preventing this little fuck-up from happening. I can just pull some uh, heat shrink tubing.
and use the industrial hair dryer. It will come in handy later. To prevent this from happening on the other end, I can use a shorter piece of heat shrink tubing. Should have done it on the linking wire. There you have it, Bob's your uncle. And now a little U bend uh, on the jack. Those forceps are pretty nice. They have a lot of leverage. So I can use them uh, for some uh, jobs that uh, require significant uh, force. So we have ground. Time for the remaining connections. Let's strip this uh, slightly farther. And to avoid the same mistake, put two pieces of heat shrink tubing.
And now you might ask, uh, Carrie, why do you use um, a heat gun for shrinking the heat shrink tubes? You can use a soldering iron just like this. But, uh, to be honest, uh, this is not my way because uh, it takes forever to do. You can also use um, a lighter, but uh, the results uh, of using a lighter are not very elegant. They, uh, from my experience, they uh, burn through the insulation. That's uh, not a nice job. So, uh, I don't use a lighter unless I'm uh, left uh, without uh, any other options. So this pesky little bugger goes here. Shape the wire slightly. Time for another piece of wire. And this one will go uh, to the output.
found the last shortest piece of wire. goes right to the resistor And we are getting close to the end. The final step will be adding the 100 ohm resistors.
Let's wrap this one around. And there we have it, the electrical connections are all done. Place it in the center. and install the knob I can add the labels. There you have it. Isn't it nice?
Freddy. So this would be the minimum power. This would be in the middle. And that would be the max. This is not to say that uh, the middle position is half the power, because uh, that's not true. This is uh, half the voltage, but uh, quarter the power, because uh, power rises uh, with voltage squared. But uh, I'll definitely keep it in mind. It's uh, it's just all about volume, isn't it? So that would be my little project that I've been procrastinating on. <laughs> Hope it's gonna come in handy. And for the time being, I think I will have a live stream on uh, Sunday after Fran. But for now, stay determined and carry on.